recreating the CR6's auto bed leveling system for the Ender 3 for free. The Creality CR6 SE continues to gain millions of dollars on Kickstarter and I've already made a Q&A video and at that time one of the most common requests was more information on how the auto bed leveling system worked. When I released my video I found one of the most common contents was wondering whether some of the upgrades on the CR6 could be moved over to the Ender 3. In this video I'm going to take you through my experiments in making a printable version of this that fits on an Ender 3. It's definitely not as good as established auto bed leveling systems such as a BL Touch or an Easy ABL, but the price is free. Let me take you through everything step by step. I think it's best to quickly revisit how the CR6 ABL system works. And it's innovative because there's no external probe, instead everything happens through the nozzle. It's all to do with how the hot end is mounted. The bracket holding it up is actually a strain gauge with the hinge point as shown and here you can see the movement in action. The bed is probed in a grid like any other ABL system in Marlin. As the tip of the nozzle comes in contact with the glass bed, the nozzle flexes up and triggers a sensor. I found this system to be remarkably effective, combined with a very flat glass bed, a test print of squares spread all around the build surface, were very uniform in thickness, so that means the system was accurate as well as very easy to get started with definitely worth recreating. If you want to attempt my mod, there's a few things you need to have in place. It will work with any main board, but if you're using the standard main board, you need to have already burnt a bootloader because we will be updating the firmware. You still need to have the standard Bowden tube hot end instead of being converted to direct drive. The only wiring required is an extension of one cable, so a soldering iron will be needed. We need to print in PETG or ABS because PLA won't cope with being this close to the hot end, and while standard hardware will be retained for most of this, it's still handy to have some spare M3 bolts at your disposal. Let's have a look at the design, and while you'll see me finally fit it to a Core XY converted Ender 3, it's been designed to fit the standard Ender 3 because I used the files available on GitHub from Creality. We start by importing the geometry of what Creality called the E-plate. We then have a base plate which slots over that, tightly fitting over the bosses that extend to mount the standard hot end and then with two holes aligning to secure our printed part to the plate using the standard bolts. There's also cutouts in place to clear the top of the bolts that hold on the V-rollers. A second printed part completes the design and it bolts on over on the side here. The hot end bolts in in exactly the same position except this time to the shroud and it's offset about 2mm outwards to make sure it has clearance. The hinge point is in the upper right hand corner and I've used two variables, the thickness and the length of the hinge so I could tune how flexible this joint was. The heatsink cooling fan bolts straight onto the front and you can see I've used a loft to try and steer the air specifically towards the heatsink instead of to the actual heater block below and we also have holes on the side to put on the part cooling fan as well as the stock fan duct. Finally, our standard Z end stop normally found elsewhere on the printer bolts into place here and we have an M3 bolt coming up from below. When the nozzle is pushed up by the bed, it hinges at this point and then the bolt will hit the end stop and send the signal back to the main board. On to printing and you'll find that both parts are correctly oriented and that you won't need any support material. There are some overhangs on the underside of the mounting holes. It's easy to clean those up in a few seconds but if you really want to, you could add support here. Infill I'd suggest somewhere between 20 to 30%, but by far the most important setting is the amount of perimeters. One thing you might like to do is to turn your extrusion width down and up your perimeters, and that will have less of this small infill and more continuous extrusion around the corner joint which will aid strength. As for material, I use PETG. I did test print in PLA and the hinge was a little bit stiffer but I fear it would melt because the heater block does come quite close to the shroud. ABS would also be good but is harder to print. After the parts are printed there's a small amount of post processing to do. You should clean off any wisps from the unsupported overhang of the base plate and you also might consider using a drill to clean up any holes and ensure their internal diameter is spot on. 
highlighted in yellow are those that need to be three millimeters. It includes the two holes in the shroud that the hot end actually bolts to, and then on the base plate, the three mounting holes to connect the two pieces, as well as the two holes where it bolts to the Creality plate. These are all holes where M3 screws are expected to go straight through. Highlighted now are the holes where we'll be cutting an M3 thread the first time we put a bolt in place. They include the two mounting holes for the end stop, the four mounting holes for the heatsink fan, as well as on the shroud half, the three mounting holes to connect the two pieces. The four holes on the side of the assembly are going to take the M2 bolts and therefore should be drilled at 1.5mm. Finally on the base plate we have the two holes that slot over the original bosses to mount the hot end. We want these to be a particularly tight fit, see if you can fit the part without using a drill, but if your printed holes are too small, enlarge these to around 5mm. Around this time, it's probably worth checking if your hinge is strong and consistent. We don't want any cracks that are going to ruin everything later on. We're now ready to assemble and a word on bolts. We need to use the more rounded button head caps instead of socket caps. And that's because they're a little bit slimmer. I'll be assembling here on the workbench to aid clarity. When you do it on the machine, it will be the same. It'll just be a little bit fiddlier with things in the way. We're going to start by mounting the hot end and this is compatible with Micro Swiss or Metal Hot Ends, but here I'll be using the stock Creality one. There's cutouts for two M3 lock nuts, and they're best placed with either tweezers or needle nose pliers from the front of the shroud. Flip the shroud around and take your hot end, align it with these two holes, and then reuse the original M3 bolts, pushing them through to meet the back of the nylock nuts. You'll need to push from the other side on the top of the nylock nut, that will stop it from sliding out of the way and allow you to get the threads on the bolt to engage with the thread on the nut. And remember, this one is very crucial, so do it up quite tightly. After this is done, make sure that it's aligned vertically and that nothing is sitting past the back of the shroud. A good sign that everything's aligned properly is that the heater block is just clear of the printed part. When you do this on the machine, you'll have wiring to worry about, but there are cutouts on the inside of the shroud and they give just enough clearance for everything to travel up the side where there's also a cutout for them to exit. At this stage, you'll have the chance to preview the mechanism if you like. Now we're ready to mate together the two halves. These bolts can be quite long. I used M3 by 20 here. That seemed to be a good compromise between having enough thread cut into the plastic shroud and not taking too long to do up. Take your time here to make sure the threads are cut cleanly. You also might find this stage a lot easier with a large ratcheting screwdriver. If you don't like the idea of plastic threads here, you could drill out these holes to 3mm and then use a long M3 bolt and nylock to hold the two halves together. Whatever you do, make sure these are tight enough to have no gap between the two printed parts. Now it's time to mount our assembly onto the printer. Stage 1 is to align the holes and to slot it into place. And stage 2 is to reuse the original M3 bolts and they thread into the carriage underneath. Next you can remove your Z end stop switch from its normal place on the printer and mount it on the left hand side of the base plate using the original M3 by 6mm bolts. This is another one where the threads will be cut the first time you insert them. Likewise for an M3 by 10mm bolt which threads into the extended part of the shroud to contact the micro switch. The idea being that you can adjust this later on to determine how much flex is required before the switch is triggered. We're in the home stretch and we need to remove the heatsink cooling fan from inside the metal cover and use the same M3 bolts to cut a thread and mount it onto the front of our new shroud. This one should be tight enough to remove rattles but still make sure that the fan blades spin freely. Finally, the stock part cooling fan should line up with the M2 sized holes on the side of the hole assembly. Again, we'll be cutting in a thread as we go and we'll be retaining the stock injection molded piece that curves the air towards the nozzle. It's about 5mm further to the right with this design, but it still should get the job done. That should be your assembly complete. In your case, it means everything is mounted to the printer. In my case, this is the time I discovered that the part I had designed did not suit the converted Core XY printer and I had to remix my own design before I could start my assembly. As you can see, things are pretty tight for the end stop on the left, so my relocated Z end stop needed a little bit of surgery with the Dremel to fit. 
there's only one piece of wiring needed and that's to take the short cable that goes from the control box to the Z end stop and extend it so it reaches the whole way up to the hot end. I don't have an exact measurement for you because my printer is different but you can template it with a piece of string and then extend this wire to match. After it's been lengthened you'll have the unenviable task of feeding it back through the sheathing that takes all of the wiring from the hot end to the control box. Plug it back into the main board exactly where it came out and if you like at this stage without even changing any firmware you're welcome to home the machine and check that everything is working. It should home as before, except with our flexing nozzle activating the switch. We're now ready to edit our Marlin firmware. And for each of these, use Control F to search for them. We're gonna start by uncommenting nozzle as probe in configuration.h. We'll set Z after homing to one or larger. That means the nozzle will lift up and unflex after homing. We wanna uncomment auto bed leveling by linear. And we also wanna uncomment define Z safe homing. In configuration underscore adv.h, we're going to find the baby stepping section, and there's four lines we need to get right there. Having these four enabled will ensure very easy setting of the Z offset on our first print. That's the minimum changes we need in Marlin so that when we enter a G29, it probes the bed just like with the BL Touch. But as you can see, it's quite fast, and with this setup, it means not very accurate. In fact, when I did my testing X, the first layer was all over the place too far from the bed in some places and too close in others. So therefore I'd recommend some more tweaks in configuration.h. For the Z probe speed, divide them by a higher number to slow them down. This will take longer, but we can claw back some time by decreasing the clearance for all of our probing. I encourage you to experiment with these numbers. Basically, the slower you do things, the more accurate it will be, but the longer it will take to probe. With these slower speeds, the probing was accurate enough to greatly improve the consistency of the first layer with my testing X. We have two options on how we can implement ABL. There's pros and cons, so we'll go through each now. The most common way is just to add G29 after G28 in your slicer start G code. This means you'll always have an accurate mesh of the bed before every print, but since the nozzle is hot, it'll be oozing and leave blobs that might interfere with your final print. Option 2 is not as accurate, but has other benefits. Via a console, we'll heat up the bed, but not the nozzle. Send a G28 to home, then a G29 to probe the bed. And finally, an M500 to store this to EEPROM. Finally, we add M420S1 after G28 in our start G code. With this setup, we don't have to wait for the probing to happen at the start of every print. And if you're printing onto a surface where the hot nozzle will damage the bed, this might be your only option. Either way, the first time we print, we need to set our Z offset. So here's a visual demonstration. As the first layer is going down, we double click to get to the Z offset screen and then turn the dial to adjust the squish of the first layer. My nozzle was far too close, so therefore I had to turn the dial clockwise and that lifted the nozzle with a final value of around plus 0.64. When you're happy, you go to the configuration menu and store this setting for future prints you can verify that the ABL system is working by observing the Z-axis stepper motor as the first layer goes down. It should be turning back and forth, lifting and raising the nozzle to ride the contours of the bed. So there we have my results and I really enjoyed trying to recreate this system to suit an Ender 3. Now I would label this as probably a work in progress, but I'm really excited to see where the community take this and how they might improve it. One idea I've had is to add a spring just to provide a little bit more support to the hot end assembly. But I'm sure you guys have lots of great ideas on how to refine this, and I look forward to reading them in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe, and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.